Good day, everybody. Welcome to Judd's room. We're welcoming Ira Harris and Pax, Matt Kenna, the Pax group back. Uh, we are uh, going to start off with episode 25 with Ira, and we're going to be behaved today. Yeah, what, so what, what, is, what is burning up these, uh, this room today? Well, earlier, Judd said that this market's like uh, having a, a girlfriend, which you should get rid of, but you just can't because you're so crazy about her. Oh yeah, just crazy <laughs> about her. Yeah, and she does, and she doesn't feel that way about me. Yes, I know, I know the feeling. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. She, you know, kind of nice to me today. Yeah. Well, we. Uh, I bought the uh, VXX this morning and packed all the S and P's for the stock run. And, uh, you know, we caught uh, an Angelo. Uh, the, the VIX itself came within about 20 cents of hitting some major stuff. So we just all bailed and took our money. And then it's, um, which, which, uh, which screen do you guys see? So I know what I'm doing. Right now you've got your, um, uh, you got the, you got, you got the, is this the, uh, the NASDAQ bonds? bonds? Yeah. Okay. So we were looking at uh, the difference in the, in the uh, uh, you know, it's one of the long time traders will have fought the um, from the past playing in the background. Yeah, somebody, somebody needs to move something out. Eric, is that you or John? What's that? No, I need these guys. Eric, turn off your, your video. There you go. And who's ever got something on in the background, please turn it off. That's probably me. Hold on, okay, let me turn it off. We'll leave, we'll leave you alone. Okay. okay. No, I'll turn it. I turned it off. I was going back to the Credelli piece that I did uh, with Anthony, and we talked about the Euro Sterling, and it's actually um, it's actually performed wonderfully into what because again, you know, as I talked with Anthony, and he did a nice job of getting that out of me, and you guys have in the past too that there's a safety valve, that the weaker the sterling goes, it actually provides a safety valve to for the British economy. And there was an article yesterday um, on one of the sites, maybe writers or the FT carried it, that British assets, because of the weakness in the sterling, were getting so cheap that vultures and others were starting to sniff around and come in to look to buy some of these assets in Britain, um, which... Uh, of course, you know when they play uh, when they play hardball with the Brits on the on the Brexit, um, they don't take into account because when you have bureaucrats and academics, there's everything is too static because it's again built to models and the, and the incomes are fixed. But we, everybody who sits in this room and anybody who listens to what you guys talk about, things are far more dynamic and things are always in motion. The only time they're fixed is when, you know, politicians try to fix them to avoid any type of uh, to get hammered by what the markets are trying to say that they may dis in fact disagree with where they're going and what they want to do. So uh, and you're seeing it. You're, I mean, this morning is, a, you know, no, they've realized that Boris Johnson is no Donald Trump, that he's far he's got far, far more ability. And now he's trying to provide uh, using some leverage uh, to exact some uh, some sense of sanity out of the Germans who are much more on the cusp here of be being harmed by the effects of Brexit and the, uh, and, the, and the French. And the French are trying to squeeze the Brits because the French do not want anybody to leave because anybody who leaves diminishes the influence that they possibly will have on Germany. Um, they they need that. They need a counterbalance. It's your, the European history has not changed for 500 years. They're trying to change it, and I know that's part of what the whole EU is about. But some of the dynamics are still in place, and that's what you're seeing. So um, again, what we got the euro sterling, we got it up to about 93. I don't think we got above there, and now we're back today at 90 and a half. So it's been a, a sizable move, and it's really just the market adjusting. As much as any, oh, we got to 93 and a quarter uh, a week ago, uh, a little more than a week ago. So uh, interesting, interesting developments. I, I love, you know, that the market is gets caught off balance and then all of a sudden, uh oh, it's not what the narrative pans out. I have a, uh, I would advise everybody to go search this out, or I could send it to Judd and he can post it. 
there's a hit from a woman in the in the uh, Bundestag. Um, uh, we discussed that. We, we Dr. Vidal. Oh, uh, did you? Yeah, I, I thought I sent it to you, Matt. I mean, yeah, I I that. Dr. Vidal, that was very good. It was unbelievably good, and it's amazing that nobody. I, I you don't know how d deep I had to dig to find that. By the way, sure. uh, I was reading about stuff about Doris Johnson. All of a sudden, that showed up as a link. And I thought it was an amazing hit. Not, not that I'm going to say it's 100% valid. I can't say that. But the presentation and the discussion is real. And that's the point. You know, if you listen to, uh, to what takes place, you know, on CNBC and the discussions, you don't get that sense. You know, it's always uh, Brexit, Brexit, Brexit. And everybody's pulling up stakes. And, and even the, you know, the uh, guys like Jamie Dimon who offered these dire warnings have backed off from them. Because there's a lot, of, a lot to take place here. Um, and uh, the person who I view as the best journalist in Europe, Ambrose Evans Pritchard, has been running one column after another discussing that it's all nonsense about the effect on the ports, that it's not going to play out that way. Even the French in Calais, the guy who runs the port there says it's not at all going to be as b bad as everybody's talking about. And people are already moving in Britain away from um, um, Dover, which has become a, uh, a bottleneck, to other ports that can service Antwerp and other uh, points of demarcation in Europe. So the dire, uh, it's nonsense is my point. And you have to be careful. And this is what we're all up against is that – we're trying to uh, sift through this and find out what what is really going on. But that's okay. I'm not bemoaning it because the more nonsense that gets accepted by the markets, the more volatility, and the more volatility, the more opportunity. So I, I'm not, you know, I, hey, if that's the way it works, it makes my work more valuable and makes me a much more important resource to the rest of the world. So, I, hey, go ahead. You know, believe what you want to believe and accept it on face value. I don't accept it on face value. Prove it to me. Um, and that's where, you know, I find that Euro Sterling and I'm, you know, that's why I was uh, rewatching the Credelli hit uh, from uh, July 28th when, when I taped it with him. So we see it full, full force and center here. But again, everybody needs, anybody who's serious about markets and what their impact is needs to watch that because there is underlying discussion going on in Germany. And it's not anti-immigration. It's not, it is the fact um, that there are serious issues here, that when you go to negative 70 basis points on a 10 year instrument, there are serious issues to be discussed. If things are taking place, people are being harmed, who's being harmed and how do you measure it and how do you impact yourself for it? Again, these are all trading markets. These are not investing markets. And I will say it as, from the loudest point I can get on the universe, that if you buy debt in anywhere right now as an investment and not a trade, you're a moron and you deserve to see what's coming to you. Because why is nobody discussing the fact that the U.S. deficit is growing by leaps and bounds in a, an economy that the White House decries is a very strong economy, but yet the deficit grows and yet yields are dropping? Okay. How long do you think this can sustain itself? I know. Keynes, Keynes told me markets can remain irrational much longer than you and I can remain solvent. I accept it. It's one of the truisms of, um, of what Keynes said. He said some that are and some that but that is, and that's a fact. We've seen it. Markets can really remain irrational, and that's the world that we're dealing with. And I don't, I don't bemoan that. That's fine. I, my job is to adjust to them and try to, and try to find opportunity in amongst all the insanity. A while back, you had one of the best lines I had, in one of our first conversations, you had one of the best lines that I had heard is that eventually the laws of economics will not be ignored, which goes yeah. along with exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, and, and that's true. They will not, you know what? They always come home to roost. I don't care how many algorithms are pushing things because algorithms are price sensitive. Yes, they're headline sensitive, but there's only so much that they can absorb. Otherwise, they lose any ability to move because one thing will cancel out the next. That's what I find 
in the realm of artificial intelligence, they have the ability to process, you know, reams and reams and reams of data far faster and in some ways more efficiently than others. But again, they don't know context and they don't know nuance. And if that's where my edge is, fine. I'm going to exploit my edge, as my buddy Norb reminds me every day. Exploit our edge, exploit the edge because that's what we're here for. I got to write that down too. Algos don't have context, nor do they know nuance. That's a great line. Uh, so, I mean, there's there's a lot to be said uh, of with that, but. I mean, uh, Judd, what did you want to specifically get into? I know. Well, you said I was that. looking at just the euro pounds, the euro yen, and the mm -hmm. pounds, yeah. and all of them are at areas where you can't chase the, you know, the the, the direction could be over. Period. So you got to be you? really careful with it for in the near term and let it play out a little bit here. <clears throat> right, because if if the euro sterling were to really start to move, you might also get euro Swiss to move up. So of course it'll be. The Swiss that will be the weakest, which yeah, I, I saw your work the other day when you talked about the uh, gold Swiss, which, you know, I'm happy that was the one that we have continually discussed in this room. Um, I said I was off of it, and I am, because the, the, there's just so much stuff going on, and the Swiss does, on any given day, pick up a, a haven bid when it's yeah. right. Uh, yeah. Now, let me... Yeah, me... you can see there, right there, the, in the futures, it looked like it wanted to go yesterday, and then it just got back down into the soup and has gone sideways again. Right, exactly, exactly. And you can't, there's no getting away from it. You cannot get away from it. It's, it exists out there. And people, listen, you know, they keep trying to sell the fact that yields are where the yields are because people are nervous. I say nonsense. This is all central. Not all, because it takes market participants to piggyback onto what the central banks are doing. But if you can't tell me on a daily basis how much uh, now the European Central Bank is not adding to its balance sheet, but it's not shrinking its balance sheet. So whatever comes, starts to come due, they replace. How much do they replace? I don't know. I don't know. They're, they only tell you well after the fact. You don't know. Only the, only the, those, uh, only those as, as uh, Fogarty would say, I ain't no senator's son, so I ain't getting the, you know, the insight on it. So whoever does, um, be interesting to see, but it is, and, and, and it's about time because it's, it's now starting to leak in that Mario Draghi is not the, the great wizard. In fact, he's more like the wizard of Oz than any other wizard. Uh, he, he certainly is not Gandalf. Uh, so, uh, that, you know, he's done this and he's left and I'm, and I'll, and I will reiterate what I said, why Lagarde is being brought in because the French hope to do this. And believe me, she is French before she is anything else. Uh, being a French finance minister, being a French politician of high standing, being that it was the French who pushed her into the IMF. Um, so she is French. And there is the move, and it, and it has to be their exit strategy on what to do with the ECB balance sheet. And if that bothers people that I keep harping on that, that's too bad, give me an answer because I wait the answer. I read a lot of commentary, I listen to a lot of commentary, but tell me what you think that the ECB's exit strategy is. <laughs> There's no answer to that. <laughs> yeah, so, okay, so Ira, what I was looking at- Maybe last... they don't have one. Well, that's a story in itself, but you know, as again, I was talking with this guy, Mike Temple, who writes such great responses into the blog. I, he really does. got- Great. And he's actually here in town, and I've had the pleasure of having breakfast with him twice. I had never met him before. We had only, I didn't even know who he was, but great. Absolutely. I have to t tell him to, to call him because he's really a, a very good thinker. Very good thinker. Uh, I'm very impressed by him. Uh, I mean, Ira, the, the, the thing about Germany now that, that's starting to bubble up on my radar is um, if, if, the German economy, you know, continues to eh, struggle, you know, I'll use the word struggle here. Mm -hmm. um, I, I've done some reading and it seems to me, you know, the internal combustion engine 
you know, could be a potential negative for their economy given, you know, the transition to electric vehicles. Now, granted, it's, it's going to take some time, but it seems like there are some German companies that are embracing the change, and there are other uh, parts manufacturers and whatnot that are sticking their head in the sand. Well, and if and if Germany doesn't make the transition successfully, um, then what I'm getting at is if the German economy continues to struggle, and now you have this new internal combustion engine issue, you know, bubbling to the surface, does that scare them? And they say, uh, we're not sharing our credit card because we might need the money ourselves. Well, that's that's a very good point. Who, who's again, Matt? Angela. Is that, it's huh? Angela. Oh, Angela. Angela. I'm sorry, Angela. That's that's a great point. And if you saw the story this morning about uh, Volkswagen being interested in taking a share of Tesla, I don't know if you saw that. I did. Yeah. Okay. All right. So let me let me go back with this because in 2013 in uh, December I was on with Santelli. In December, we always do one before Christmas, and he asked me two predictions. And one of the predictions, that, and he caught me off guard totally, is, you know, because, again, Rick and I don't prep. You know, most people don't understand that. There's no teleprompter. There's nothing. There's not a note. He may have read a blog if I've written it, but we don't prep. So, But he knows where to go with me. But he asked me, and it caught me off guard, and my one of my predictions was that GM – would buy Tesla if the price were to drop. I think the price at that time was $125. And uh, I said, if it goes down to $75 or $85, I think you could look for GM because they'd be stupid not to because, number one, they could Tesla didn't have showrooms, but they could have put the Teslas in Cadillac showrooms, which would have boosted Cadillac uh, foot traffic and allowed GM to, to leapfrog with the technology because there was no question in 2013 that the technology – of the of Tesla was was real and genuine, and their cars were real and genuine. It's just a matter of could they get up enough uh, traction through moving numbers. So now that's why this Volkswagen story today is interesting me, because the Germans have been slow to do this. I know BMW is working on electric, and uh, certainly Mercedes, but they've been a little slow. So now you have Volkswagen saying, well, we can buy into this, which would make eminent sense and elevate Tesla in the same way. There's so many synergies they could create. You know, it's a matter of whether Musk would want to give up any sense of control, but that's, you know, that's a whole different discussion. So I, I do find it interesting, and your point is well taken, because the Germans are, and the, and the diesel uh, scandal set them way back and cost them an enormous amount of money. So it's, it is all in play, and, you know, interesting that, Last week, you know, the Twitter world was a flutter with, oh, the Germans are, you know, because the Germans were talking about uh, fiscal stimulus and over the weekend. And, uh, you know, who was talking? And, of course, a lot of times it's unnamed sources, which I can't stand. Uh, and then, of course, then they said the Bundesbank uh, agreed with it. But I, I wrote in the blog that if, if Jens Wiedemann isn't, if I don't see his name on it, I'm not buying it. So, they, of course, they, uh, the Bundesbank came out and deny, basically denied what was earlier done? Um, interesting, but the but the DAX actually held up pretty well in spite of it. Uh, but here's what I say to that, okay? Because I'm getting ready to really think in these veins. Everybody's pushing the the Germans for a fiscal stimulus, and I raised a question, and I'm I'm going to do a blog post either tonight or over the weekend. But let me ask you, is not the Germans guaranteeing the entire European Union edifice with its credit card, as I like to say, a form of massive fiscal stimulus? Because where do you think French interest rates, Italian interest rates, Spanish interest rates, Portuguese interest rates, uh, on and on and on would be if the Germans weren't guaranteed, if in investors' minds it wasn't the Germans guaranteeing the entire ECB project? Where would interest rates be? So is that not, in, f in fact, a form of fiscal stimulus? Because it's the German taxpayer who is on the hook for all this. Anybody want to deny that or disagree with it? Go ahead. Give me your best shot. <laughs> well, that, that was exactly the point that, that Dr. Uh, Wiedler made in the Bundestag last week was, was exactly that. And now, now with Britain leaving and with France making it so hard, 
uh, or Brussels making it so so hard with, by by uh, uh, you know under France's direction or pressure from France. Mm -hmm. That's going to leave Germany on the hook for their credit card to make up for the rest of the the smaller countries. I thought that was just so powerful and so important and so, so misunderstood. Like you said, you had to dig so deep for it because nobody else is talking about that. Yeah, uh, it, 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 right, it, it, right. And, and I'm gonna tell you what, there's something else. I think I started out talking about this. There is no G7 communique coming this week because Macron can't get unanimity and he doesn't want to look bad so they're not issuing a communique and his reason is and there's an article i think it's in the ft uh you guys can dig it out he says eh, it's all bureaucratic infighting anyway and he actually uses this this is macron you know it's a translation that they use in citing why they're not issuing a g7 communique and he says yeah it's bureaucratic infighting and the deep state now i find it incredible that macron could to use the deep state because France is nothing but the deep state and it's the way the country is run because it's all run by the anarchs who come out of you know the, the uh, Sorbonne and uh, the uh, government program th that all the elites in, Fran in France are pushed out of. That's the deep state and now he's decrying it. He's so full of crap I can't take it. But yeah, yeah, so the world really goes. Interesting that Frau Weibel was you know, really calling out France and, and as they're at the, at the center at the center of the problem. Yeah, well, they are. Here, I got one other comment for you, Ira, on yep. the uh, Tesla uh, Volkswagen yep. thing. As the states, I wonder why a, a Volkswagen would buy Tesla when their electric vehicle, vehicles are better in both performance and reliability. Also, why would Tesla's, why would they take on Tesla's financial obligations and including solar cities money losing business all great questions and it's there's a there's a lot there but but the, the tesla technology and i'm not sure that the, tech, the german technology on this is better especially because tesla's battery technology i think is is really uh for anybody who's long and i'm not long tesla I, again i would have bought it had it corrected that was my point never got we never got close to there um so Okay, you know, but I think those are great points, but I think their battery technology uh, may be the real deal with that. Uh, again, I can't say for sure, and I'm also a believer that with the amount of money that the Chinese and the Japanese are thrown still at hydrogen, I wouldn't discount that either because those, again, are very deep pockets. And the technology in some ways works very well. It's expensive, and you've got to drive the cost down. But... You know, I, I don't know, but those are very good points. And, of course, the, the Tesla debt, but yet there are buyers for that debt. But I guess, you know, if you're willing to buy uh, uh, French debt at negative 40 basis points, you know what, you may as well buy uh, Tesla debt, right? Uh, and, and don't forget that European corporates, which have never been the corporate bond market in Europe, was never a mainstay of the financial system. The banks, and even now, are still the mainstay, which is why they're struggling. The U.S. corporate bond market uh, investment grade is far bigger, and so much of of investment grade debt, uh, corporate debt in Europe, is you know absolutely at zero, maybe ten or twenty basis points or negative. It's it's unbelievable, and yet people buy that debt. So, you know what? Why not? You know, you you may as well you may as well take that on. And Volkswagen has such deep pockets. It'll be interesting. Um, I just did see it interesting that they threw their name in, although the hierarchy at Volkswagen denies that they're really considering it. And the families who do control the company uh, are also supposedly not behind it yet. But well, Elon Musk, I thought the, interesting. the key man is a liability, but he's a key man. He is a liability. You know, and that's not the way Germans do business. They don't let some asshole go off half cock like that. No, no, there'll, there'll be no tweeting. Uh you know, it's, you, you, you even see German politicians are not active. There's some, but not like what goes on everywhere else, which is. Well, I mean, in, in, a, in a corporation, they, you know, they're very conservative how they govern their corporations and they're very long term. <coughs> okay. Yes. So, so Ira, what, you know, goes back to what I originally sent you last week. I started looking at these 
the spreads and the discounts in the uh, European bonds. Mm -hmm. So I've got the SEP oats right, uh, the SEP oats up right now. The SEPs here. I'm gonna I'm gonna replicate this so I can put the uh, um, the pieces next to it. Is this a Dece? Hold on. There's a Dece. No, I'm not getting it. What did I do? The, the Deces are trading at uh, 171.41. Mm, let me see. I don't have my still on SEP. Yeah, right, so they're premium, but that's, yeah, but that's because the last auction, the coupon, was. was it's not even a coupon. You can't well, even issue a coupon. I guess that's my point. Yeah. Is you know how these are going to trade out because you, any way you look at it, you still have these giant rollover gaps, whether it be in, you know, D's to SEP, whether it's the oats, the 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 bonos, the the Italians, which have it's two hundred points. Mm -hmm. the, the Italians are the the Deces are two hundred points under the SEPs. The uh, I sent you that. Swissy bond. <laughs> and, I mean, that's crazy because now, you know, this is what I keep har harping at with everybody. You better know which chart you're looking at going into these rolls or you're going to be trading off the wrong playbook. You know, there's no question. But, you know, again, that's what there's thrown because there can't be a coupon on a negative bond because otherwise you'd be sending a check. And how many people? <laughs> well, you, you know, <laughs> yeah, you, know do, you don't. We're not going to minimize that. That's absolutely right. Because if you just imagine if you had to send a check to the government every every half, you know, depending on how often they clip the coupons. So, of course, they can't. So it's all in the pricing mechanism. I'm telling you, they are setting either the world has to eventually just restructure all this debt or they're setting the world up for a major, a major uh, whacking. And, of course, it's going to be the pension funds all over the world who do pay the a dear price. Ira, it dawned on me yesterday that um, these negative interest rate schemes, right? I mean, yep. the, the, these new German bonds, right, with negative yields, mm -hmm. it's a new way for governments to make money. Uh, let's think about take, that. Take, take, taking in more than what they're going to give back. Or, or <laughs> another, or, or what about another, another uh, uh, framework? Is it, it w would it be a, uh, would it be considered a bail-in? Yeah, that's that's a great possibility. We don't know. Again, they they have a playbook. They, they do have a playbook. But if they if they put losses directly on all these bondholders with the bail-in, oh boy, you saw what happened in Italy when they did it. Yeah. You know what? It, it was a disaster and a half. Even though, you know, they stuffed it down everybody's throats, but you know. Uh, it's, you have to be very, very cautious. And they know this. And they know this. It, what Draghi is handing off to Lagarde is an absolute, absolute uh, mess of great proportions. Does she have the expertise to walk through this? She has the political heft, but will she have the uh, the financial acumen? I'm very, very doubtful. You know, Ira, uh, Janet Yellen described QT as watching paint dry, which right. basically means, you know, which told us, you know, that the U.S. Fed, which is probably the more, most sophisticated out of all of them, right, mm -hmm. didn't know what they were doing, A, and really had no exit strategy, B. Well, they, what makes have, us think that the ECB has any sense of an exit strategy? You know, they have not. They, they, they have none. That's what I keep I keep pushing at. They have none. If you tell me you have one, tell me what it is. But they don't. They they're they can't tell anybody the truth, uh, which is that they're going to roll it into a euro bond. That is. How about that, this? How about that's this the, that's the exit strategy. How about this idea? Okay, so the the biggest debt problem is in the the Latin part of of Europe, really, right? And so divide. Just re-denominate into two different euros, basically a Denmark euro and, and then a rest of them euro, euro, and all the debts they re-denominated as well. Well, Club Med Europe will blow up. 
Well, maybe not. Maybe they'll do what they need to do, which is, you know, um, devalue, which, of course, you won't, but at least they could get some, some heft from that. But you know what? Again, there is no exit strategy. There is no exit strategy. And again, and again, if anybody's listening here and they think that they have one, go ahead. And let's let, have a go at it. Let's let's you talk about it. <laughs> you know, Ira. For me, you know, I, I peel away the layers of the onion. Okay, and they can call quantitative easing any acronym, any any sophisticated terminology that they want to concoct. Okay, but in the end, is it nothing but money printing at its core? Yeah, no, of course. You know, it's okay. what Jer- Jerome Powell basically said. As long as they have a printing press, he's not worried. Yeah. So, you know, that's, I think, the longer-term concern is, you know, what eventually happens given all of the money printing. Hmm. You know, now, it, 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 it may blow up after we're all dead. I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't know. Again, impossible to time it just like when all these people throw around the yield curve discussion you know people who couldn't who wouldn't listen for for the previous you know four or five years when movement was taking place it was too boring and nobody cared now everybody is a uh, is now an expert well i've got the expert of scar tissue to to know <laughs> how yield curves work and when you're right and when you're wrong um and it's taken it's a long learning process and and again as uh Rick Santelli was on today at 10:40 basically making the case that we discuss regularly which is there's no context to any of this so when people tell me that such and such is going to happen no 1979 1980 when we had a phenomenally inverted yield curve by design because Paul Volcker had to ring inflation out of the system and was willing to take the hit was fine, but you you can't compare this. You can't compare this to 2007, 2000, or 2006, 2007 when the curve inverted for different reasons. Uh, every everyone brings its own. And again, we don't know what a yield cur- inverted yield curve means at zero interest rates. We don't know. We don't know. We don't know the signaling mechanism that it's supposed to send because the central banks have broken it so badly that we just don't know. And when these people sit out there, and they're all salespeople, beware of salespeople because they're all trying to sell you why you should be buying, why this, now oh, yeah, stay in the stock market because, you know, no, it's 14 to 18 months. That's the, uh, that's the operative uh, methodology on CNBC and Bloomberg. They both come, you know, oh, you know, it, we don't know. We don't know. Just like Powell, in his most honest uh, thing at the press conference, talked about they don't know the economic impact of the tariffs. And I will leave you with this, because if the if the bank, uh, the Fed under Powell, were to say, okay, like in tomorrow's speech, well, we're going to hold here, and that's and definitively say that, come the weekend or Monday morning, watch. Donald Trump will raise the issue of tariffs on European companies and European products in a big way. Because you know why? He knows he'll move the Fed. Because everybody will say, oh, my God, if, if we get into a trade war with Europe and Europe's already slowing, what's going to be the that, – that will then become the narrative. But Trump knows that he can play this game and he's got him cornered. That's that's when I listen to Rosengren, and I like Esther George. Rosengren, I'm not a fan of, but Esther George has been a person who's spoken to what needed to be spoke for years already, and the market has totally ignored her. Um, but her no vote, at least she had, you know, she she voted her what she has to say, and I give her a lot of credit for that. Rosengren's been all over the map. Um, and, and she was right, but she's not right now because the world is a different place. And as, as Fed Vice Chair Richard Clarida has been yelling about since April and May, is that the international e- economy and the financial system is important to Fed decision making. And it seems that the, uh, uh, Rosengren and George and others only want to give um, – really give uh, sway to the domestic, the dual mandate, which is, is just is nonsense. It's nonsense. You, and, and Trump understands that, and he does. He understands that, and he's playing to it. 
because he doesn't, you know, it's about the dollar. It's about the fact that they can operate in a zero interest rate world, a negative interest rate world. And he's envy of this. You know, here's a guy who's a real estate guy. He understands the importance of, uh, hey, you got you got low interest rates. Leverage it up, baby, because it's, you know, to the moon. And uh, and he's wondering why he can't get away with this. So, I, again, he will raise the issue of European tariffs. He's He's been a little bit uh, soft on it of late where he was. But don't forget, he's, we got the G7 over the weekend uh, from France. He's got Macron in his sights. He's got Merkel in his sights. And if, he, and if uh, Powell gives a speech that he's not wild about because he's already been out getting get in front of it, talking about the need for lower rates, my my uh, conjecture, and it's an educated conjecture, not a CNN conjecture, uh, is that he comes forth with tariffs on Europe, because you know what? He'll get he'll cause enough uh, uh, angst in the global in the in uh, in things that the market is is focused on to make it to make it a doable pro- pro- proposition. Now. Do I know for certain? No. Again, it's a conjecture, and but we'll find out next week if the if Powell were to give a somewhat hawk what the market is determined as a hawkish speech. And right now, what you're seeing is some sense of it. You know, look at look what's going on in the U.S. Treasuries and whatnot. Uh, they're definitely thinking that uh, with Rosengren and Esther talk and Esther George talking that you're going to get uh, a little bit more uh, hawkish element. I'm not convinced yet. I'm not nearly convinced. And if it is, then I look for Trump to 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 play the card that he has, which is the threat of more tariffs. And you know what? The threat has worked. And do you think that it'll be initially be a risk off event that's going to be? Oh, uh, I was exactly what I was thinking about. You know, right there. Met by some break to nowhere again, or do you think it might turn into something? Uh, I, you know, I don't know this, you know, because then, you know, if, what, what if you, what if you got a three, four or 5% drop in the equity markets? And, and again, what if we saw that type of, you know, uh, yield, what if all of a sudden, uh, bonds were negative 80? Well, see, that was the whole thing about the spreads. Uh, but the, in the European bonds, as I was trying to sort out in my own mind, how that was going to reflect on the, uh, the indices. Yeah, we, we, you know, the, when we saw it the, the initial time, the yields dropped dramatically and the indices got pummeled, right? Right. Mm-hmm. So let's see. You know, the the market has heard this before, but if he really gets aggressive because he's, he's angry, you know, and uh, he gets angry very easy. So if he throws that crap out there, um, Hey, no wonder he wants to buy Greenland. You know what? Money's so cheap, he could probably float the bonds to the ECB and have the and have the Europeans finance the whole deal. Now that would be something I I, I would say, wow, that's pretty good. Oh boy. Hey, don't laugh at don't laugh at that. Don't laugh at that. Because don't forget, the ECB has a shortage of stuff to buy, so he could present them with all kinds of stuff. Yeah, other than the fact that the Danes aren't having any any truck with that at all. Yeah, I know. I know the poor Danes. All they do is want to, you know, enjoy their life, and here they are, you know, being a topic of discussion. Uh, they don't want to be a topic of discussion. <laughs> If, you, if there's if there is any that's going to be an actionable trade. If there's any talk of President Trump starting to, to, to discuss European tariffs, then then Sunday night is definitely going to be a sell. Oh yeah, watch for it, and especially coming out of the, the weekend G7. And he's not going to be happy. Yeah. You already know he's not going to be happy because he again he won't let go of the uh, of this intense slight. And, and while we're also uh, dealing with this, you know, we also discussed here, and I'm going back to it. See, the Italian government fell, and and we know what the Italian bonds are at their are at their highs. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. So so everybody who ran, and we talked about that in real time. You know, yeah, we yeah, did. This is going to be interesting. That's because Salvini is no dummy. You know, the market. You know, oh, they're going to punish him because it's all about punishment now. If you dare buck Brussels, which is why that piece 
from the Bundestag uh, is so great because it deals with that. It's about bucking Brussels and what Brussels wants. And as the market wakes up and goes, these guys, if you're just in the, if you're in, the, if your whole game plan is retribution, as it appears to be with the way they want to treat Britain on Brexit, be very careful. And why is Italy? Why here? Here's an article. Mm -hmm. Because everybody's chasing yield. And if you're and if you're building a basket of European bonds, you got to have some. You got to have some Italian, right? Otherwise, you can't. Italy, Italy's the highest yielding instrument of the mainstays, and it gets, and you're down to 1.3 on Italian ten year, 1.3. Let's yeah, see, Spain. And we're, still, and we're still not at the all time quarterly low yields from 2016. It's unbelievable. Not in the U.S., but in Europe, you are. Because look at you have Ireland is neg Ireland's ten year is negative, Sweden is certainly negative, Belg Belgium is negative, France is negative thirty six basis points, Finland is negative, Austria is negative, the Netherlands is negative, they're all negative. So you if you're buying you you know if you think if you think that the exit strategy is to create a European bond by folding the entire balance sheet ECB balance sheet into a euro bond. Then, then what you're doing it, it makes perfect sense. Perfect sense. Okay, so let's go back to the VXX guys. If you're and we had this conversation this morning with Angelo when I bought the VXX and Matt sold the spoos for thirty dollars. Is that that's going to be the cheap way to play, it, especially if you're a money manager and you want to be long. And the VXX closes on its tail on uh, tomorrow. Buy it, because that's the only thing you. That's the only way you're going to be able to hedge yourself going in. Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's, it's going to be listen, insurance. Yeah, it's, it's just a good point, and you know what? It's these are things that are real things, and again, if Powell gets hawkish, then Trump becomes a weekend issue. And I, I haven't blogged about. You know, I'm I'm forming the blog in my head as we're talking, so I'm using you guys to. To bounce off, so I wish somebody would kick back at that because, or at least small it. Um, and if there's not any questions, I'm going to uh, get going because I got. Um, oh, I'm mulling it, I, and I'm uh, not going to kick back on it. I'm mulling it and thinking to myself, all right, at what point do I wait until Friday afternoon to sell them, or am I selling them Sunday night? When am I looking to sell the S and P? Yeah, it's, it's going to be a very good question. And well, is that the best? And is that the best play to make, by the way? Yeah, yeah. And the other question is, you know, we might be able to buy some lottos. For the, for the following Friday in the queues of the spies that are have ultra low risk and if and you know just to put out some premium to see if it's going to work and well, not spend and, much money and the good weather vein don't forget the, the uh, DAX futures open at seven thirty Chicago time on Sunday night right keep an eye on that because right now they're sucking everybody in because the DAX is back above the two hundred day and everybody is you know leaning to the fact that the uh, that the Germans are going to come up with a stimulus program because once the Germans if the Germans would openly say oh we got a stimulus program then you know the Ger the Italians get to do whatever they want that's the that's the bottom line and everybody else does too which is why the French you know uh, are pushing so hard on this because they know that once the Germans get off you know take their foot off the brake the spigots go wide open and I'm, I'm not making a qualitative judgment about that, about what it will mean for the world. I don't know. But the, the initial, you know, you got, even if, even if the bond were to go to zero, you have extraordinarily stimulative monetary policy coupled now with fiscal policy. Uh, the European equities ought to be the massive outperformer. But we, again, have to see that that is really a, the policy. We just don't know. There's so much crap that gets, you know, tossed around the world and again it comes out as headlines that algos you know react to okay I, Ira, I, do you, you, Ira do you think the number if they did something would be somewhere in the neighborhood of the 50 billion euros they floated around that's that's a nothing number as far as I'm concerned it, it, yeah. it, 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 that's that's sort of what I'm driving at okay no. I was going to say let, let, let's stop and think about this for a minute okay stimulus right I mean that's like you know drinking a cup of coffee you know, because you need to get through the afternoon, 
Now, now, now let's talk about how you feel next week. Yeah, yeah, and how no, you're going to survive next week and the week after. I, I, I agree with that. I, I, I agree with that wholeheartedly. You know, you know, we, we've got a wet blanket <laughs> suffocating the global economy because of excess capacity all over the place. Well, right. that's, that's it. That's exactly right. And that's what easy money does is create excess. You're not getting rid of your problem. No. And, and when I listen to these people from the Fed, I go, really? You think that's your problem? And then they talk about, well, you know, these models that talk about yield curves, so those don't work anymore. No, but your Phillips curve model does, right? <laughs> well, I mean, I, yeah. But I, that, that should under- be the question. <laughs> That should be the question. Which model are you? I heard him on TV today, and I go, well, why didn't you raise the issue of then, well, what about the models you're using to make policy? You know, because they're arguing that the Wall Street and economists and all the uh, private sector economists, they're using broken models. Well, what about the Fed? You know, we always hear, Ira, that, uh, you know, stimulus tends to, you know, pull growth forward temporarily. Yes. Right. Mm-hmm. And so not that I necessarily agree with everything uh, Muhammad al Arian says, but I, I keep hearing the word, the phrase sugar high in the back of my head. Yeah, no, no, that's right. But, but al Arian's book, you know, and, it, and it's critical, which, you know, this um, the only game in town, which really comes from Chuck Schumer's uh, famous comment back in 2013, when he said that, you know, when Bernanke was testifying, in front of the Senate, and Schumer told him, he said, well, keep doing what you're doing because you're the only game in town. And it was really a slight on the legislative branch and the executive branch because they couldn't come up with anything as far as a fiscal plan. So you may as well keep doing it. And that's exactly what they kept doing and everybody else around the world. But then you allowed the central banks to basically be, be running fiscal policy as well as monetary policy. And that's where we lie. And that's what the ECB has done. Draghi has picked up the mantle because he keeps, you know, decrying the fact that there's no uh, organized fiscal stimulus. So he has to keep going, going, going. That's, you know, well, the more you keep going, going, going is the you're, you're making it easy for them to go down that path. You should have stopped long ago and said, I'm not doing it anymore. So you guys better get your shit together. Excuse me. And, um, and and get a, together some type of fiscal plan because I can't, you know what, I'm not doing this anymore. Yeah, so here, but, here's a comment, Ira, from Brian uh, in the room. He says, what does Germany do? Will they be pulling a ripcord or just kind of nudging? If they pull a ripcord and it doesn't have enough of an effect, do they have anything left to well, it, it, Germany Germany can really go large. You know, they've been running surpluses, so there's nobody who's in better position uh, from a uh, an accounting point of view as to who could go large. And I don't even know what large would mean. Is it 500 billion? I mean, uh, they, they, people d- talk about how bad the infrastructure is in Germany, which for Germany is an abomination because they've always had such great uh, infrastructure, uh, but they've kind of let it lapse as they've had a lot of other expenditures and they've gone on to this, you know, um, con- uh, legislatively mandated balanced budget. Um, so there, there is room. Is there the will? We know that there's a financial room. Is there the political will? That we don't know. And again, because they're on the hook for the entire European project, and yes, they're on the hook for the entire European project, because if it, would, if it turned out that people said, well, who's backstopping this? And they didn't, and they didn't believe it was Germany. Rates would be, would yes. rise dramatically in Europe. Then we're on to a whole different game. Well, right now they're operating under the illusion, and I emphasize illusion, yes. that Germany's the backstop until, right, Ira, we get to some point in time where uh, there's a problem with confidence and sentiment shifts, not only right. in Europe, but, but globally against central banks in general. And you get, that, you get that last snowflake that lands on the mountaintop that causes the avalanche. Well, that, that's right. And, but we know that's why the gold's been going up, because we can trace the gold rally to the June 17th, 18th, 19th, when we had Draghi from Sintra and, and the Fed 
and you and go ahead, you go put up a gold chart. That's that's the beginning of this, you know, 150 uh, 10, 13% rally. Yep. It's, it's right there as clear as day. So, and that's with no inflation because everybody keeps talking about that there's no inflation, there's no inflation in Europe, there's no inflation in Japan, there's no inflation anywhere, and it's it's underperformed in the U.S. So the gold can't be going up because of inflation. So finally, we can get rid of that nonsense argument. Hey, higher inflation, deflation. Any comments about the uh, yuan dollar? What level it really matters? I can't. I can't say. It only really matters when the market says it matters, or you start to see uh, the hue and cry come from a lot of manufacturers that, hey, we're you know what? China is all over the world is just stuffing stuff into markets and driving prices lower. You'll you'll start to hear it. We're not we're not hearing it yet, but um, and the Chinese are are afraid of it at this point because it, it's one thing to be confronting the U.S. They don't want to confront everybody. Peter, unmute yourself. You're a heavy breather there. Oh, sorry. So they're they're heavy. Uh, I mean, they're heavy breathers and heavy heavy. Def I mean, a huge deflationary factor in the world. Yeah, I mean, you, oh, it's yeah. a big breakout above the 200 month moving average and. Uh, you know, back above seven in the yuan. So, I mean, it's got room for another uh, almost a 72 to 7,300. Yeah, well, you know, More. We're, it, there are all these things in place. And, um, you know, again, if you're only looking at U.S. data, which is mixed at best anyway, uh, today, you know, the leading indicators are a little bit better, uh, but PMI was a little softer, um, you know, you can pick and choose what you want. I, I've seen some recent unemployment data this week talking about that there's actually going to show the BLS through some of their measures are going to show a loss of jobs bigger than people are expecting, not on a monthly basis, but, you know, using uh, data compiled over the year. Um, it's a little wonky for me, but uh, I pay attention to it. And there, there are so many things in play so many things and if you think again if you think these bonds are going the yields are dropping because people are predicting a recession i don't think that's right either i think it's you know that's just a manifestation of the the impact of central banks on uh on investor sentiment you know and bitcoin cash put in an interesting low today uh, and it's oh, yeah. been rallying for the last hour hour and a half of the indices yeah, look at it. Look at it. I see the screws uh, are already basically back well, unchanged. So, so this, that's a game with, with the industrials. Um, it's, uh, uh, Deer got the ORL stops early, then they got the ORH stops, and now now it's right back into uh, uh, momentum resistance. you got to see if it can actually get up into this gap and do something. But you, everything looks the same. I mean, they you had a Algorithmic stop run to get all the ORL stops and all the all the big cap stocks early. That failed. Now everything's back above their 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 breakdown numbers, and they're trying to take them the other way. Yep. Yeah. And, and you know what? And this is the way we're gonna we keep going. But I'll tell you what: if somebody, you know, and I'm not, I don't, I don't pretend to be uh, a, a quality, a high quality uh, technician. But uh, you look at this broadening top heading into a, September, October. Oh, yeah. Be aware. Be aware. And we got a playbook, and we're going we're gonna to stick to it. Broadening tops in October are not a good mix combination. That's <laughs> all I know. That's, that's the extent of my technical uh, history. Okay, guys. <laughs> there you got it. What are you laughing? You're laughing, but that's... Uh, I no, I, I'm laughing. I'm laughing only because I had a couple of thoughts about Howard. You can always think good thoughts about Howard because he is such a he, he is when it comes to technicals as good as anybody I've ever known. Uh, so, I mean, certain things that he taught me to see over the years uh, and I'm going back with him for 40, 41 years because uh, we were very simpatico from the day we we really found each other on the floor. So uh, he taught me that long and long and long ago about broadening formations. So uh, 
Uh, and do you know that nut job has had himself scrubbed from the internet? No, I didn't know that at all. You know, I've had no. Can't even Google his name and find anything about him. Okay, uh, you know. Okay, gone. That's that's fine. You know what? God bless him. You know what? That's you know what? He taught me a lot, and uh, that that he can't scrub. Can't yeah, scrub well, he what he can't taught scrub me. Scrub our minds. No, <laughs> no. Uh, you know what? I guess they could in China in the fifties and sixties, but uh, uh, yeah, it's it's called implants. Uh, See how now I'm old. I understand that from a whole different perspective. Oh God! <laughs> oh, been to your dentist lately? I am going uh, next uh, Tuesday, so don't look for me. Yeah. My worth. Anything over your feelings? I tell you, I hear I I hear that drill, and I it brings me back to my childhood. I hate it, but uh, five, five figures easy. Yeah, so be, so be. Uh, all right. Uh, anything else? If you guys have questions, just let me know. Tomorrow, be attentive. Because again, the algos are going to be spinning it hawkish, dovish, you know. And, and and somebody said that there was a hold on. I don't know if this that actually I've never seen a Powell. It starts uh, at nine o'clock our time, you know. So right before nine is when it sure it gets. Yeah, up. it'll be released. It'll be but, released, and the algos will have their way with it. Is there a twi a tweeter? Is there a Twitter handle Jay Powell's Diary? Does that is that real? I don't know. Let me look. Probably not. Yeah, it sounds false because I never. There, there, there's no way that they're gonna. Jay Powell's gonna tweet. Okay. Yeah. Thank God. You know. I, I thought maybe. <laughs> I, I thought maybe. I. You know. I. I re, every day. Every day I realize how stupid I am when it comes to this stuff. So. Uh, I, I said, wow, have I been missing something? That's really, okay, so that's somebody, you know. Could, could, could you imagine if Jay Powell starts tweeting his thoughts? Like, it's not, like it's Trump. not even funny. It's not I know, even funny. funny. Oh, my, oh no. my God. Now, Ira, you know, Jackson Hole historically is like a powwow session to share ideas. and mm -hmm. yeah. Discuss, yeah. Right? Yeah. I mean, it would be highly, highly unusual for any kind of policy pronouncement to come out of this thing. Right? No, no. Bernanke did it two or three times. And yeah, other people. Yeah, this male's and, jail and, thing came out of Jackson And, and, and Draghi yeah. did it too. So you have, I can't stand that they've taken an academic symposium and elevated to keep your eye on policy. And you know what? And it's a big part that the media is responsible for this, you know, because all of a sudden they like getting their, you know, they like being in the limelight. I, I, it's stupid. Well, it's you stupid. Get a free trip to Jackson Hall in the summer. It's nice. Oh, I love Jackson Hall. It's my favorite spot. Uh, you know what? I've camped it right out in front of those. I've never said I've been uh, into uh, Jackson uh, uh, Lawn Lodge, or uh, and it's and it's magnificent. And it's and it's rustic. And I love camping there. I spent five days camping out in Jackson. I just loved it. The, the Tetons, are, they just rise out of nowhere. It's not like the rock, you know, they just rise. You know, it's wow. It's like, oh, all right, crank it up. Somebody uh, put those mountains up, will you please? Because they, they're just <laughs> magnif magnificent. It's one of my favorite spots I've ever been to. When you went there, did you take your family there, Ira, or did you just? I just my wife, wife and I. My wife, we honestly, July seventh, two thousand and five, the day of the London subway bombing, we were leaving, and we're on the highway when the bombing, and we had, we had, tent, sleeping bags, propane stove, and whatever else in the car, and we went for three weeks, between uh, Custer Park in South Dakota, and then we went to Montana, and then we went to. Um, um, Yellowstone for five days, and then uh, the Tetons for another. It was magnificent. Really, yeah, just perfect. right out of the trunk. Every day I was moving the t tent to a better spot. When somebody would vacate, you're allowed to do that. So we we didn't make reservations. We just took as we could. So it was great. Absolutely great. I, Next time, rent a motorhome. You know what? My wife, want, my wife wants to do that so badly. You know, so do I. I said. That's what I, I did. Never, we took three weeks in a motorhome. Yeah, you know what? I, 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 that will be my next one because she's been you know, begging me to do it or buy an airstream and just go, you know, and I'll pull up in front of my kids' homes and just camp out there. I go, okay, I'm here. The hell with you. Just like, you know, uh, what was that? Meet the family or meet the fuckers. <laughs> so, uh, 
<laughs> oh my gosh. Oh jeez. Uh, I'm here. I'm here. We'll deal with it. Uh, I got it. It'd, be, it'd be all their worst nightmare. Yeah, let me see your, my grandkids for 10 minutes, then I'm giving them back. You know what? I had them last week. I had uh, my dear Julian, uh, eight months old. Great. Just just great. So uh, uh, anything else? Any questions? Just let me, let me know. But be attentive because, you know, this is this is my call. We're not reading it from anywhere else. Uh, it's as loony as the, you know, the New Zealand bank cutting 50 basis points. Boy, <laughs> and, and, and is that, and nobody brings that up, you know, no. as, the, as the Fed talks, as all these people talk, oh, our economy is so good. Oh, Aussie Kiwi is up over 106 today, so pretty much, uh, and that's with bad Aussie numbers. Um, but, and this is what nobody talks about. When the Fed people come out and say, well, the economy is so healthy, and I'm not, I'm not debating whether it's healthy or not and by what your measurements are, but everybody, the, New, the New Zealand unemployment number is at almost, you know, is at, 20, uh, is at 25, 30 year lows. The German unemployment numbers are very, are very strong also. Uh, you know, so, so what do you tell me? Stop invoking unemployment in the U.S. because it hasn't stopped anybody else from cutting their interest rates. So that plays into when they say that that plays right to Trump because the question has to become, well, if you're under, if your employment situations are so good, why are you cutting rates? I can't remember who it was. Was it Malaysia or Indonesia that that cut rates last night? Oh, I, you know, I didn't even see that. So uh, again, I can't I was, remember which one. Malaysia, Indonesia, one of those. One of those right. countries. We, we get. To, uh, I'll go find it. But I. I wasn't paying attention. I was thinking about and trying to run through this. I got it. Takes so much. There's so much stuff out there that you have to get rid of, but you have to read it to know to get rid of it. You know, because it's just kind of nonsense. But you know, now that we have uh, the media camped out in Jackson Hole, and there's a lot of stuff in front of me that I have to sort through. But that's my call. If you get a if you get a more hawkish uh, stance out of uh, uh, Powell. out of Powell, Ooh, watch Trump get busy. Okay, guys, Ira, thanks a lot for coming in. Really okay. appreciate it. I know, I know, we'll cover more of the uh, currency crosses. Uh, you know, we really only talk, and the euro yen is interesting. They're all interesting here with what's going on. So. You got to be attentive to them. Euro sterling, I, I I love the rally in the sterling today because everybody's caught off base there. Everybody who believes in the uh, popular narrative are all short up to their eyeballs and long and long euro sterling. And yeah, you know, it may prove it may go to par. I I'll be very doubtful, but I don't think the Brits would be at all uh, bothered by it. Well, Ira, I'm sure you're not surprised that, you know, Angela Merkel is lobbying on Britain's behalf. Oh, no, I know. And now, you know, some people are denying. Here, there's an article on the FT right now. Did Angela Merkel, here's the headline, uh, did Angela Merkel really offer a big Brexit concession? She knows. She knows that she's in a very, very bad situation here. And she's and she's weakened politically. And And the politics in Germany are... And again, I, I beg everybody to watch that uh, Bundes, that woman uh, uh, who talks so much sense about what's going on. Don't believe the common narrative. You you do so at your own risk. I mean, I'm sure, know, we know the, remember, I'm sure we know the answer to this question, but who would you say Germany sells more cars to, Britain or France? Britain. Yeah. She, ta she talks She's not about even that. close. Yes, no, Dr. Course. Dr. Weigel talks about that in, 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 in front of the Bundestag. She actually spoke about that. Yeah, yeah look at the Yuan Yen, uh, Ira. Yep. ORL day right into the 200 day right now. So that'll be you know, interesting. Let, much let, me put, let me put it up right now. I got it. Uh, come on. Okay, let's see. What do you say? Is it the 200 day? I haven't yeah. been, uh... I, No, it's a 200 month, not the 200 day. Oh. Yeah, I was going to say. Hold it's on. a bigger number. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm seeing it right now. Wow. 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 Yeah, so that's not a small thing. It's under the 50 quarter, and it's at the, it, right into the 200 month. Where Where is it on the, the semi-annual? 
Well, John, you know, I don't watch it. I have it up on my screen. I don't watch it as much as I should. But I'm going to tell you what. All you do is have to look at it in relationship to 19, June 1998 when the United States intervened in the uh, in the dollar-yen at the behest of the Chinese. Yeah, and that was a Fed deal where Goldman bought all those uh, – Yen calls. That's when Rich came in along a couple of 2,500 yen futures that morning. Yeah, that's what prompted Bob Rubin to get out because he resigned in the, you know he resigned in the, in September, but he had made that speech two weeks before about the need for a strong dollar, and then because of the Chinese were bitch, you know Bill Clinton was on his way to China, the the uh, Treasury had to intervene because the Chinese were complaining about the weakness of the uh, of the yen. Yeah, and that's when I was at that World Bank conference in D.C. And every single one of those guys was long dollar yen, telling Bergstern and the rest of them that they were totally insane, and the and the and the yen was going to 140 or 150. And I turned to uh, uh, Connolly, who was sitting next to me from FX Concepts. I said, "Where are you wrong?" And I looked at Howard's cycle sheet, and I said, "He said I'm not." I said, "Are you wrong at 119?" Are you want wrong at one eleven? Where are you wrong? I mean, in the morning it was at one eleven. Yeah, they. I mean, they the people got crushed. A lot of great traders, Soros and those guys included. Yeah, they were but all it, one way. The whole crowd. But, but you take that back. So if you're going to do the work on that, do it and use June of nineteen ninety eight. Okay. Because right, that's that's the critical element. I mean, you can go back, of course, to when China devalues by 50 percent on January 1st, 1994. But I think that the June date, because because that was enough to unnerve the Chinese at that time. Now, of course, again, contextually, we're in a far different world than we were then. Yeah, and it was actually, I think, it was in the fall. It was August when they. Did. You know, well, it it presided because then we it corrected the initial and then it continued on. So by October, you really had a sustained move. And some people came back for a second bite of long dollar yen. Oh, that was the one that just crushed them. Yeah, crushed them. Crushed them. I have a Peter posed a good question. Who has a higher per capita GDP, Germany or Britain? You know, I don't know. It's a good question. I don't know. I have to look UK that does. Yeah, and yeah. that's that's another thing that <laughs> that she spoke about. You know what? Again, the Brits are not without their strengths there. And and again, you, you can hate them, but Trump understands this, and he's really being, you know, and, and he has an incentive to screw with Europe. He's not happy with Europe in any way, shape, or form. Especially the more the and the media, they all, you know, they all. He's an easy target for them. But he, he, here's a vindictive guy. It's just the way he operates. He's vindictive. Um, and, you know, that's his M.O. So this is going to get very, very interesting here. And and again, he undid the Obama thing, which was a stupid. I thought that was major league stupid. And I blogged about it then back of the queue because he involved in Obama, you know, placed himself in British politics because it was a month before the um, the referendum. But. So he's placed himself in the same mix because, hey, we'll create a free trade with you. You know, and, and, and the naysayers are going, well, it's not going to be the same. You can't lock yourself out of Europe. Well, you know, having a free run into NAFTA is not necessarily a bad thing. Oh, you know, but, but you, you're, you, you can't blame Trump for this. This has been U.S. policy forever, never to make Europe too strong. I mean, every time Europe's strong, they, they tend to think they're they're warriors and can take over the world. I mean, oh, yeah. This is U.S. policy to split up Europe. Oh, yeah. There's no question. There's, there's, it's it's don't, real. Don't blame Trump just because you hate him, Ira. <laughs> this is U.S. policy 101. <laughs> Respect. Oh. Another... All right. Let, let me go, guys. I'll talk right, to okay. you. Thanks, Ira. Appreciate right. it. All right. Thank you very much. Hello, Bruce. Are you, are you in Chicago yet?